Hey, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we continue our series called Labs. In previous videos, we have talked about methemoglobin, sentinel lymph node biopsy, nuclear bone scan, etc. Today, it's time for intrinsic factor antibody test. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch my video on vitamin B12 or cobalamin before watching this one. So here is how vitamin B12 absorption goes down. You eat a source of vitamin B12. Cool. The vitamin B12 is bound to the animal protein. We gotta get rid of this animal protein. Who's gonna sever this relationship? Amylase from your salivary glands. Okay, sever the relationship. Hashtag divorce. Now vitamin B12 is free. Free to do what? To bind to the R protein, also known as cobalophilin. Cobalamin? Phylin. Phylin means lover. But now the vitamin B12 wants to get rid of this sneaky, sleazy lover. Who's gonna get rid of this relationship? Pancreatic amylase. Okay, now vitamin B12 is gonna bind to what now? Uh, to the intrinsic factor. Where did this intrinsic factor come from? It came from your parietal cells, the same cells in your stomach that secrete the acid known as hydrochloric acid. Now vitamin B12 and the intrinsic factor are uh, moving and dancing inside your gut. Then vitamin B12 will be absorbed. Where is it absorbed? In the terminal ileum. Now, what is pernicious anemia? Pernicious anemia is a disease where you have antibodies attacking this lovely intrinsic factor which comes out of your parietal cells. Now, intrinsic factor is gone. So what? So what? Now, B12 is not going to be absorbed. So you will suffer from vitamin B12 deficiency which causes megaloblastic anemia a subtype of macrocytic anemia. So pernicious anemia is a disease, no kidding. It's an autoimmune disease, so I have autoantibodies attacking my own cells. Example, the antibody could be attacking my intrinsic factor. We call this anti-intrinsic factor antibody. Woohoo! Or it could be attacking the parietal cells that made the intrinsic factor. In this case, we will call it the anti-parietal cell antibody. And that's the story of pernicious anemia. However, now we do not just have one type of anti-intrinsic factor antibody, we actually have two. And we call them type 1 and guess what? Type 2. So creative, it's unbelievable. Type 1 is called the blocking antibody and type 2 is called the binding antibody. Don't forget that your vitamin B12 gets absorbed here at the terminal ileum. What's the mnemonic? The mnemonic comes from Ellie. And here's the great mnemonic. First, you iron your clothes and then you fold them. Later, you put them in the closet. So, iron first, folate second, and cobalamin third. Iron is absorbed from the duodenum, folate from the jejunum, and B12 from the terminal ileum. Beautiful mnemonic. As we have discussed before, you need vitamin B12 and folate in order to make some DNA, in order to replicate your cells. But if you have vitamin B deficiency, such as because of pernicious anemia, you do not have B12. Therefore, what? You cannot divide your cells. Your cells will remain immature. And as you know, in hematology, immature cells, called blasts, are big, immature, and stupid. We call them macrocytes, big cells. What are the causes of macrocytic anemia? We have megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic. If you're talking about megaloblastic, we have folate deficiency and B12 deficiency. But if you're talking about non-megaloblastic, you have liver disease, alcohol, and drugs. In megaloblastic anemia, you have big blasts. Everything is big, immature, and stupid, including red blood cells, B neutrophils, and giant megakaryocytes or giant platelets. Let's compare between type 1 anti-intrinsic factor antibody and type 2 anti-intrinsic factor antibody. Type 1 is the blocking, type 2 is the binding. Why do you call it blocking? Because it blocks the attachment of the intrinsic factor to the lovely B12. Awesome. Why is type 2 binding? Well, it prevents the binding of the intrinsic factor to the term or at the terminal ileum. In other words, it prevents the absorption. Well, honestly, both of them will inhibit the absorption of B12. It's just a matter of where. Type 1 is more common, type 2 is less common, type 1 antibody is more specific, type 2 is less specific, type 1 is more sensitive than type 2, but is not that sensitive in and of itself. I can also have anti-parietal cell antibody and that's a story for another video. Here is the deal, a patient came to you, vitamin B12 levels low, neurological symptoms are there. Red blood cells are low, hemoglobin is low, hematocrit is low. Type 1 or the blocking anti-intrinsic factor antibody is positive in the patient's serum. Therefore, you have confirmed the diagnosis of pernicious anemia. Congratulations, now it's time to help the patient and treat. But hematocosis, what if uh, the type 1 uh, anti-intrinsic factor antibody came back negative? Does this uh, rule out the diagnosis of pernicious anemia? Shut up, it does not. 
This antibody is very specific, but it's not that sensitive. It can rule in the diagnosis, but it cannot rule it out. Okay, medicosis. So, if I suspect B12 deficiency, I can order the anti-intrinsic factor antibodies, and I can order the anti-parietal cell antibodies. Are there any other lab tests? Sure! You can order the Schilling test. Watch my video titled Schilling test in my hematology playlist to learn more. This is an archaic test. No one uses this today. If you like this video, you will adore my cardiac pharmacology course. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. We will talk about antihyperlipidemics, antiarrhythmics, antianginal drugs, antihypertensives, diuretics, digoxin, etc. The course has 50 videos, 25 cases, 25 questions with answers, of course. You get to download my notes and a mind map. Once you download the course, you get to keep it for you forever. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.